Hey there everyone, this is Yui. Welcome back to FTB Academy. Today we're going to talk about power. So let's get to it. Now, I've had a few people ask me about power generation in this mod pack. I'm going to talk about my favorite ways of generating power before you get to the end game with the Draconic Reactor and the storage. Which is going to start with bonsai trees. Bonsai trees into a resourceful furnace into a petrified fuel generator. So I'm going to drop some random numbers here, or what seem to be random numbers here. So if we look up a bonsai tree, we hit uses on it, you're going to see all the different bonsai trees. So we're going to focus on just some saplings, say birch, jungle, acacia is good, dark oak's fine. Any sapling that it says right here usually takes 30 seconds to grow this bonsai. Some of them take longer, but we're going to stick with the 30 second one. It'll generate wood, stick, leaves, sapling, and sometimes a byproduct. We don't care about most of that stuff, but we can use it later, some of it. But first, let's talk about storage drawers. Now, the way I like to set these up is with these controller slaves. But if you don't have the necessary materials to do controller slaves, feel free to use basic 2x2 two two drawers and lock them with the sapling, the wood, the leaves, and the stick. And just keep them locked. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a few drawers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six different saplings. And I know a couple of these will generate at least five items. So I'm going to put down seven of these two by two drawers just to make sure I can hold all the items. Then I am going to have a compacting drawer, which is going to be used for charcoal. And charcoal's already in there, or it's locked in there. But that's okay. You don't need to have it locked in. You can add it in afterwards. Now, I like the controller slaves because it just makes this so much easier. But when dealing with controller slaves, keep in mind that they must be within 14 blocks of the controller. Which means they can go... Here's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... 14. So this should be the very farthest one that we can talk to. And to test that, we could take, say, our saplings, throw them in here, and if you look up in the one probe, you'll see your 12 saplings. Now, if you hold shift over a controller slave, you should see the saplings. All the way, oh, see, never mind. In this pack, it seems to be a little shorter. So these two do not reach. And then when you place down a new one, it takes it a moment to recognize it. So this is... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, something. Like 12. Let's see. This should be 14. Yeah, so it will it only goes about 12 in this pack. Just check it, put it down, hold shift over it, and make sure you can see the items in your other drawers. There, so we have that many bonsai trees in a quadrant. We can multiply this all around it if we really want to. It is not going to be super necessary. So I'm just going to put a few of these out. There we go. That'll work. All right. So I have six saplings, like I said. But now, if you check your saplings, let's just go with oak, to be simple. These are all going to be the same. 
they're all going to have a 75% chance to get wood. So what we want to do is we want to get charcoal blocks, which means at 75% chance, we're going to need 12 saplings or 12 bonsai trees per block of charcoal on average. So what that means is when you put down 12 of these, which happens to be one of these rows, every 30 seconds, because that's the growth time, remember, we'll get roughly one block of charcoal worth of wood. So we'll get nine wood every 30 seconds. That's on average, so it may vary for you. So I'm just going to put down a few of these everywhere. Let's see. Four should be fine. Expand this as much as you need. We'll cover more numbers in a second. Once I finish putting in grass. Oh, the excitement. Actually. Let's just get rid of that. There. That's two more rows. Good enough. So, I recommend using a variety of saplings for a specific reason we'll cover later because we can use the saplings themselves to generate more power oh my mouse is getting stuck all right there we go so that gives us one two three four five six which is perfect i'm not going to put in the saplings yet Actually, uh, no, well, let's, well, here, if we put in the saplings now, we're going to generate a backlog of resources, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It just means it's not going to, it's going to look like you have way too many bonsai trees. So I'm just going to put them in rows. missed one get some spruce in there I recommend upwards of nine nine different saplings you do not need more than that there we go all right so we've got all our saplings now every 30 seconds they will grow and generate resources. So I'm just going to lock these drawers as they fill up just to prevent things from flashing later. But now what we need to do is we need to smelt the wood that we get. I'm just going to do that on the side here. Uh, let's see. Go back here. Alright, so. I'll put down five of these. The number that you need is going to depend on two things. First, the upgrades that you give it. There are these four upgrades, energy and speed. Then it's tier one and tier two. So, this one... We're going to just upgrade four. And this one, we'll just leave the same. Just for comparison reasons. So, if we take, say... Sure, let's grab some acacia wood here. Throw this in here. And we'll throw it in here. We don't have power yet, but I'm just going to... Hook it up to a power cell that I already have. Uh, 
output is on that side. All right, that'll refresh these numbers here. So, a non-upgraded furnace will smelt upwards of three items, one, one in each of the three spots, every hundred ticks, which is five seconds. So what that means is every 30 seconds, which is how long it takes our bonsai trees to grow, you will be smelting up to 18 items. Now it's going to be slower until all three spots fill in. What that means though is one non-upgraded furnace will be able to keep up with two batches of 12 onsite trees, so 24 in total. And that's how much a non-upgraded furnace can do. Now if you upgrade it all the way, it goes one operation, so three items every 39 ticks, which is almost two seconds, it's a little less. What that means is within 30 seconds, you're smelting 46 items and some change, 0.15 something. Which means overall, an upgraded furnace with all four upgrades can handle 5.13 batches so we'll just say five, five to six batches of your bonsai trees. So up to like 60 to 62-ish, or almost a stack. So I highly recommend you upgrade them. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is take your item ducts. We're just going to, well, man, this thing is too fast sometimes. I already know that this one can do five and this one can do two, so that'll do seven altogether. So I'm going to use a resonant servo. I'm going to disconnect it from the drawer here. I'm going to swap this to, where is it? Round robin. A stack, uh, yeah, sure, that'll be fine. And we'll set it to ignored. So, I didn't give it any filter of items, which means anything that can be smelted will go in here. In our bonsai trees... Oh, can cocoa be smelted? Cocoa can be smelted. Okay, we're going to blacklist cocoa. We do not want that. Because that's not helpful. Anything else in here? I don't think apples can. Not in this pack, at least. So yeah, that should be good. Now, these should be filling up and running. They also generate essence, so if you have any desire to use the mob duplicator, from industrial foregoing, I highly suggest you save this essence. Because this will let you duplicate, say, any mob you want that you capture in the capture ball. Or no, what's it called? I always forget the name of this thing. It is this. Mob imprisonment tool. So any mob you throw in there, say a pink slime, for example, if you want to mass murder pink slimes, or... Uh, wither skeletons or cows even you can use this essence plus one mob that's captured to spawn more but we have these now so let's get rid of these we need to export these items back into storage and where's my stuff item ducks I'm just going to disconnect those and throw a couple more servos on and just tell them to go. Okay, so now all the charcoal so we basically have wood being produced then wood turning into charcoal charcoal going back into storage. 
I have the charcoal in this compacting drawer so it automatically converts up to the blocks. Now what we can do with that is we could take our generators, which I'll just put right over here. That way we can eventually get rid of this uh, power cell and store the power elsewhere. So one resourceful furnace, okay, any resourceful furnace really, but they have three item slots, but they will only burn one at a time. So they basically just have a way of storing three stacks of items, but they're only going to burn the first one even if you put three in. But if you take, say, a stick, piece of wood, a piece of charcoal, and a block of charcoal, one thing you'll notice with these generators is watch the burn time. Put in the stick, 37. Put in the wood, same time. Put in the charcoal, it's the same time. And the block, same time. So. These petrified fuel generators will burn anything for 37 and a half seconds. Which means uh, whether you're doing a stick or a block, it's the same time. But you'll notice a block generates 800 RF a tick. A single piece of charcoal only generates 80. So if you do blocks, you get an extra piece of charcoal, basically. So that's why we do blocks. Let's see, do I got more servos? Yes. Now, that means since this is every 37 and a half seconds, it means one batch of bonsai trees will support one and a quarter. So every three batches of, no, sorry, every four batches of bonsai trees will support five fuel generators and we have six so we're gonna need a couple more of these that's five six seven so now we should be able to just wire these up connect them to so I like doing the controller slaves because you can pull items out or insert items into them we're going to put a servo there, but we are going to grab a block of charcoal and we are going to whitelist only that and tell it to go. Oh, wait, no. Ah, well, it's too late. I'm going to drop the stack size to one and tell it round robin. So who got them all there? That way, it will fill all of them up evenly. So what I anticipate is six of these should roughly be running full-time on average. And the last one should be running partially. It's not going to work that way with Round Robin, though. It's going to be they're going to take turns sleeping, basically. But we have a backlog of material right now, so it's all right. But there you go. Now with this setup, this is going to be roughly 6 times 800. So 4,800 uh, 4, RF a tick. And if you're not sure the conversion, so it's, uh, like I said, 6 times 800, and then you multiply that by 20, so you get 96,000 RF a second is what that comes out to be, which comes out, it's quite a bit. So that's the basic power generation I would recommend you starting with because it is super simple to use. Now let me just wire this over here. This is going to look super ugly. But there we go. Okay, drop that. I just have a chain of energy cells here. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's talk about flux ducts real quick. So 
these here are the hardened flux ducts, or what I'm using. They're not the cheapest ones, but they're also not the highest tier ones. So the cheapest ones are a thousand. Now, the way these work is in orange text there, you'll see transfer amount is per connection. So that is very important to keep in mind. So this here is a connection. It got backlogged. What did you do? Oh, did you have cocoa in you? Oh, yeah, it sticks in you. <laughs> okay, hang on. Why'd you have sticks in you? Let's try this again. I think when the wire connected to the controller it started throwing some weird stuff. Blacklist. Cocoa beans. Round robin. Go. Yeah, when the servo turns red like that, it means an item tried going out. It could not find an appropriate inventory to go into, so it went back and is waiting. But anyways, back to these flux ducts is that's one connection there. If I take this guy here and I put him there, you'll see two of these. Now, each of these connections will do 4,000 RF a tick. It's not the combined amount, so it's each. So if this can accept 4,000 RF a tick, it will, and if this can, then it will also. So keep that in mind, which means if you are dealing with, say, these things. There we go. These infusion crafters, they will suck your energy right out. But what you can do is you can give them multiple connections if you're generating enough power. So here we're only generating 4,800, and this is transferring 4,000, but this will only, right now, since it's got one connection on the bottom, will only accept 4,000 RF a tick. If we do two on there, it will now accept upwards of 8,000 RF a tick. So if we wanted to, we could expand our bonsai trees significantly, increase the number of generators we have, and thus just increase the number of connections we want. On this guy, probably up to three. Maybe four if it's on the corner. Which means using these cheap flux ducts, you can transfer up to 12,000 RF a tick to this block. Now it gets better if you want to jump up to say the 9,001, or 16, 25, or eventually the cryo-stabilized ones. I strongly recommend upgrading over time though. They do not mix and match. So if I have, say, oh, well, I don't have any good ones on me. We'll just say the, I have the cryo stabilized flux ducts right here. If I connect them like this, this will still only be getting 4,000 RF a tick because that's the limiting factor right there, that connection point. So rewire, rewire your entire setup if you want to upgrade your wires, just to make it easier on yourself. Alright, drop this junk off. Okay, so we covered that. So a quick recap. 12 bonsai trees to a batch. That means every 12 bonsai trees you'll get 9 wood every 30 seconds, which means it'll be one block of charcoal every 30 seconds. One non-upgraded furnace can handle two batches. So 24 bonsai trees per non-upgraded furnace. Every upgraded furnace can handle five batches. So up to 60. It's more like 62-ish, but round it to 60 just to be safe. And then each batch so every 12 bonsai trees can support one and a fourth. So once you get four batches, 
which is 48 bonsai trees, you'll need five generators to keep up. And then you can just export the power and store it, and they will generate 800 RF a tick per generator. So keep expanding your bonsai trees, keep adding generators, and you'll get plenty of RF. I highly suggest creating these energy cells, which are used to store it. They're also from thermal. They're right here. They are pretty simple to make. Mostly lead, iron, redstone, piece of electrum. But that will let you store 2 million RF before you upgrade it. If you upgrade it all the way, they store 50 million. So just having a buffer of power, I always recommend having a buffer of power. That way if your power generation fluctuates or something and you generate less for a small period of time, you still have power to run your base and stuff. Okay, so we still have other things we can do here. If we're saving all the items, we still have leaves. So this is not a great option, but it is an option. I'm just going to grab it from here. Because I don't need it there. Alright, so you can make from actually additions this leaf eating generator. It's not good, but, you know, it's a little bit more power. So if we just put this to the side here, we can get, say, a block placer. Here we go. I'm using an auto placer, it looks, which is perfectly fine. You have options. Auto placer, there's a block placer from industrial foregoing. Just look up placer usually. We have the auto placer and we have the block placer. The block placer though takes power, the auto placer does not. I'm using the auto placer. Similarly, if we just, uh, and I'm out of servos. We can throw this on here. We can whitelist the different types of leaves and just tell it to go. Oh, you're full. You're full too. Everyone's full. Input on the front. So these energy cells, when you configure them, blue is input, orange is output, and yellow is neutral, it doesn't do anything. So since I am generating too much power, because like I said, we're generating 4,800 RF a tick, plus another 800 potentially, we're going to need a couple connection points just to generate enough power. So now we can store upwards of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 24,000 RF a tick we can store. But what is this like? Every, almost every second. It's not great. But this generates 300 power per leaf it eats. So if you just export your leaves, one of these will be sufficient for all these bonsai trees. Just export your leaves, let it eat it, and you'll gain just a tiny bit more power. It's noisy. So we'll just get rid of it for now. Alright, the other thing you can do with this same setup, and the reason we diversify is because you can do a bioreactor setup. So if you throw a... It's, it's not that bad to make. And eh, we'll just leave it over here. Doesn't matter. Ideally I'd put it over there so I could just run the wire there, but just demonstration purposes. Anyways, this thing can hold nine different items. It runs every 200 ticks, so every 10 seconds it'll run. You could give it upgrades. It'll run faster. That's not going to be accurate. 
But what this takes is saplings. So if we put a sapling in here and give it power, I'll look at this awesome wiring job. Best ever. <laughs> so it'll, there you go. 76 ticks, which is roughly four seconds per operation. It will turn every slot that it can into biofuel. So if you look up biofuel, right here in the bioreactor, so seeds, some vegetables, other stuff like that. But saplings are also here. Maybe not all the saplings, but some of them. I'm not even sure if all of the ones I picked are in here. But what you could do then is just export those saplings. Since this only accepts certain items, you can just... Oh, there you go. There's a use for your cocoa beans. It'll fill up each slot up to 16. So this can't do birch, I guess? No, it can. It's just being... being too slow, I guess. Oh, something backed up. A lot backed up, that's why. Let's drop this to one item. If it's backing up, that means that the servo is going too quick. So now it shouldn't be trying to put a stack in each time. There it goes. But now what you can do with the biofuel is if you get yourself a fluid duct. Um, somewhere. I don't have any regular ones, so I'm just going to use this Ignalium plated one. They work the same, except these can also transfer power. I would transfer this into a tank. I'm using a black hole tank because it's just going to be set it and forget it. You never have to worry about it. Export your biofuel into there. And then you can take more fluid ducts and export from the tank to these generators. There we go. And these generators, they're not that bad. Let's see. It's not the greatest, but let's see. It should tell us. No, it's on the... Here we go. 160 RF a tick for a total of 640,000 RF per bucket. So these will generate an extra 160 RF a tick per. Now granted, you're only getting saplings roughly every 10 minutes per bonsai tree. So whatever 10 minutes is divided by all of that. So you don't get nearly as many saplings, but it is still extra power. So these bonsai trees by themselves are useful to generate three different types of power. The primary one is going to be these fuel generators, these petrified fuel generators. Everything else is just a bonus from using bonsai trees. But that's a great way to get power that is super scalable, pretty easy to do it early on, and it'll last you most of the game. So just keep in mind, add more if you need to, using the numbers we discussed about. So next, and the other power solution that I used was, oh, here we go, lag. It likes killing all the entities at like once when I load in. Is I made a video about setting up this emerald farm. It's basically just a small tree with villager spawners. It cycles out the water in the back here. 
A quick note though, this must be resonant for one bucket of water or it does not have enough time to cycle through. I export blood just in case something falls in there. But basically, this will just generate liquid emerald. We'll throw in the casting basins and that'll go into storage. So it's just free emeralds constantly. Let's go check storage real quick. How many emeralds do I have? 11,000. So I'm going down. Which is okay. I have six. Come on, get down there. All right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Six of these dynamos over here. Which are what I am using the emeralds for. So let's just talk about those real quick. So if you set up an emerald farm, I highly recommend these uh, numismatic dynamos. If you hit uses on them, they take coins and turn them into power. So I didn't realize this originally, but they will also take emeralds by default. I thought you needed the augment, but you don't. So with this, we can say, there we go, we'll just put four on, because I'm not sure the rate, so I wanted to see what they do. I need a fifth one, don't I? Let's get another one. Might as well. This one. All right. Regular upgraded. There we go. Now we have one of each tier from basic all the way up to resonant. Let's grab some emeralds out. Too much junk. All right, so one emerald should generate, what was it? There you go, 200,000 RF. That's not that great. At all, I thought it generated more than that. Hang on. Oh, these aren't even running at full power because I got rid of the conduits, not the conduit. There, now you should. Yeah, because I thought it was like 600 RF a tick. Oh, so it does matter. All right, so definitely, uh, definitely get the augment. Let me just pull them out. All right. Okay, so make sure you make the augment. This one. Just Electrum Signalium. Which means the basic one here is going to be pretty bad. So this will generate a, what it was, 120 RF a tick. That's 300. That goes up to 4. So this will be 5, I imagine. Yep, 5 and then 6. Oh, that's only 40. 
that's pretty pretty low so upgrade them I recommend doing the resonant tier ones using the uh, what is it there's one for fuel efficiency there it's in here these ones fuel catalyzer they will increase the amount of RF that the fuel generates so it basically means your fuel lasts longer so these can get another 600 RF a tick on top of the 800 RF a tick and if you set up an emerald farm it's pretty easy free power now if you want even more power on top of that you can export these sticks and put them into you, well you can put them into these uh, petrified fuel generators you can also put them into the pitiful fuel generators these ones they behave the exact same way except they only take uh, wood based products so wood and sticks basically other than that I guess I guess you could do steam let's see are you empty yes nope you can't do steam okay I don't know what else to do with them then yeah I'll just put them in the pitiful fuel generators these ones here they also do 37 and a half seconds so you will need a ton of them otherwise void off your sticks because they only generate 5 RF a tick so that's basically the power setup I used for most of my crafting I also have one other thing which I did a separate video on this this is automating empowered oil which gets fed into these oil generators here each of these only generates 120 RF a tick so this is what's that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so 28 right yeah which isn't much what is that 28 times 120 is 3,360 RF a tick assuming they're all running which they're not oh thank you I don't want that but that's another option that is much more complicated so I just recommend sticking to the bonsai trees if you want to further increase your wood production if you get into astral sorcery make yourself a tree beacon Okay, you can stop that now a tree beacon will basically act very similar to a bonsai tree well I say that but basically it grows a tree and then it'll just suck resources from it as it slowly vanishes so under here I have these planters they just plant the saplings I let the saplings grow naturally over time and then it just harvests them for me and that wood gets thrown into my other bonsai tree it just combines over here which gets fed into the petrified fuel generators so that's a way of producing wood faster if you want and the last thing that I'm gonna cover is going to be well two parts if you set up yourself a laser setup so these will automatically arm up resources from these laser drills here and one of the resources you can uh, can get is coal so if you set that up and you have yourself a mob farm I have a separate video for that it's 
not to that scale I just do one setup at first but in here also I have wither skeletons you can see them occasionally but that's another way to get coal I have wither skeletons in there and I have stonelings but if you're doing stonelings you need a awakened core the rest can be the uh, wyvern yeah, Wyvern Core. If you're doing Stonelings, though, you need Awakened. I did another video on setting that up, too. But basically, if you take your coal... Oh, so much junk now. Whatever. Have fun, future me. Figuring out why everything's randomly put in there. Okay, but if you take your coal and you export it into these redstone furnaces with pyrolytic conversion. So what this lets you do is it lets you take coal and turn it into coal coke. I don't know if I'm doing blocks. Yeah, I'm doing blocks. So it'll export blocks. My storage system exports it into this chest and this chest will randomly distribute it into these and then they'll go into this chest which is connected up top but you'll get the coal coke if you throw the coal coke in the same petrified fuel generators you will generate 1600 rf a tick so it's double that of just regular charcoal blocks but in addition to that you will get creosote and there's not a whole lot there so you get, what is it? There you go, two and a half buckets of creosote. But you could take that and you could throw it into a compression dynamo. And if these are running, they're generating 360 RF a tick. So it's just a further way of taking coal and processing it, getting some extra boost of power in both creosote and the coal coke by going through the petrified fuel generators so that's a bunch of different ways I know it was a lot of random information but that's a bunch of different ways to get power so pick and choose which ones you like I just recommend mainly do the bonsai trees uh, cook the wood down into charcoal and then feed it to the petrified fuel generators do that at the very minimum and you'll be pretty set for a long time anyways then that's all i really wanted to cover so i hope that helped if not let me know i did make a discord so feel free to hop on there and ask questions if you get confused anyways that's it then for this video so if you made it this far thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye bye